Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to watch the demo player with VR Spectate how-to videos. In this video we're going to talk about setting up the replay browser. So the first thing we need to do, what is a replay browser? Well, let's go to our content. Again, before we go over here, if you don't have these folders, you must click on view options, show plugin content, and show engine content. And once you have those selected, we can go over to demo player content. And just to show you what the replay browser is, it's really this UMG demo list here. And what this is pop, uh, populates all the replays found in your save directly automatically. So we definitely need a, a way to get those without having to type in the long file names. So let's go ahead and set that up now. Now the best way, you can set this up, uh, depending on your game, but the best place to set this up is in your player controller. So let's go to your player controller class. In my class, I have something called PC Deathmatch. Now this is separate than the player controller for the replay spectator. The, the player controller for, for the PC Replay Spectator solely for recording the uh, demo itself. So that gets spawned in uh, while the recording, and then we get to play that on the um, uh, on the replay. So actually, after we're done recording the replay, it records that player controller in there. Then we can actually jump in that controller and utilize it during the playing of the replay. So just to be straight, this is just your regular game player controller that you actually want to uh, bring up for um, uh, loading a browser. You can do this in the main menu as a separate menu, however you'd like to set it up. I'm going to set up as a player controller for now. And uh, you can, if you don't have a, a custom player controller, you can go ahead and create a new one and then add it to it. I have an existing player controller called Player Controller Deathmatch, and it's my default player controller class whenever I, I go into the game. So let's go ahead and open that up. And what we want to do is uh, we want to go ahead and I'm just going to do this pretty quick and easy is create a new menu item. So when we come in the game, I want the, the list to show up and then uh, close. And if I hit B for browser, it brings it back up. So let's begin with first, let's create a widget. Create widget. And I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see. Uh, let's go ahead and do the demo list. And we see UMG demo list. That is the replay browser. And we want to do this for ourselves. Create a reference for ourselves. And then um, promote to a variable so we can always keep track of it and I'll call this UI replay browser oh if I can spell it right browser there we go all right so now what I like to do is I always do this for a validated git so click on this validated git a validated uh, we right click and get to convert to validated git this saves an extra couple nodes instead of have to do is valid this is a, a way to do that so it's a pretty cool little trick to do if you don't know about it so what we'll do is if it's not valid we'll go ahead and create this and then set it and then once we do have it created we'll add it to the viewport so add to viewport add to viewport and then we also want to set input to uh mode UI only. So we'll go ahead and get all this stuff sorted out. I like to stack my uh, icons at the top here. Go here. If we already have this for some reason, I'll go ahead and spawn it to the viewport. It means we don't have to recreate a duplicate one. Um, and let's go ahead and create this as our target to focus on. And then we need to have ourself. So we'll go ahead and grab this and target ourselves for the input mode. So basically now, whenever we start the game, the browser mode should pop up. Let's see if it does do that. Oh, I'm actually going to stop that. Uh, go in here and play. And okay, yes, we actually now have the browser that pops up automatically. We hit back and we can start playing. But I don't have no way to bring it back up, so let's do that real quick. Let's uh, go ahead and add. I want to do a key press of B. So um, B, um, you know, sometimes it's hard to this is quick and dirty. I mean, for your own game, you can uh, do it a different way. However, you have your input for demonstration. I'll show you this way. When I hit B, I want to go ahead and um, see if it's already visible. And that's that's the first thing. So let's get this. Uh, is visible? Yes. It. See if it is. Branch it. And if it's not visible, what we want it to do, because uh, if it is visible, we have the back in there. We won't have B to close it. We'll just have B to open it if it's not already open. So if it's not, we'll just go ahead and actually just tie it right here too. So quick and dirty. Uh, it works. Um, so it shares the same code path. We could actually convert this into a function, which would probably be better to do. So let's do that now. Um, let's go ahead and call this for simplicity. Let's collapse it to a function, activate. Or show menu. There we go. Show browser menu. Show replay browser. And there we go. And right now, I'm not coding in for it to actually close. When you do open it up, it will 
have the back button. So now back closes it, and if I hit B, it opens back up again. So everything's working good. My input is set back correctly. Whenever you do close it, it does set back up to game input. All right, so now that we have that going, we need to actually test that out. So let's go ahead and do that. I will go ahead and exit this out because the demo player does not. Uh, and there's something else I want to show you, a problem that you may run into. So I've already set this example up to show you the problem that you may encounter with some of your projectiles and um, replicated things. So let's go ahead and close this down. We'll close this down, and I'll go ahead and bring up my launcher here. And let's go ahead and uh, start the game, launch game. So as we launch the game up, um, I made this game, uh, it's actually my son, my son is seven years old, um, I got him started right before he turned seven to play with the Unreal 4 engine, he loves playing with the content packs, and one thing he asked me recently to do, so this, he wanted me to put the gun on a car, so that's what I did, I just quickly put the gun on the car that we could go around and, and play, so as we sit there, and uh, move around, I can shoot balls and knock things around. So if we look at B, hit B, you can see that we actually are live. I'm gonna delete the old ones I have by clicking X up here to remove that. And this is the one we're currently live. We're actually recording it right now, so I'll go ahead and close this and recording. And we'll go ahead and have some fun. I'll go ahead and um, shoot my blocks out of my way so I can get up and down. My son's gonna love this, he hasn't seen it yet. So, uh, and we go, oh boy. And for some reason, this car is really hard to keep control of. So let's go over here. Um, I did put Z so we can turn it around. I'll go ahead and just do a little bit more work on here so we can record. So as we're, as we're playing, we are recording actively. Oh, I hit Z to flip myself back around. If I did, before I added that, I was flipping myself around all the time. So now I'll go back in here and shoot my box. Oh my goodness, what awesome physics this car has. Oh, I'm just a really horrible driver. So I just cannot make those ramps. Not sure what the magic is to make those ramps, but this content pack is definitely hard. Let's go through the flaming loop of fire. We have to make the flaming loop of fire. Oh my goodness, and I did not. So yeah, horrible attempt at my driving skills. This is why I'm a programmer and not a driver. So, oh, oh my goodness, I just stalled. And <laughs> All right, well, that's enough of that. Let's see how long we've had. Okay, we've had about a minute of 29 seconds of pure crazy driving. All right, so let's go ahead and load that up. I'm just going to click on it. And what's going to happen is it's going to go ahead and load that replay up automatically. And here's our controls. And as you can see, I'll hit tab to move around and we can uh, see the car going. But something you'll notice beginning is when this guy starts coming around here, uh, I, I should be shooting balls out. If you notice, my projectile balls are not coming out. So that's a, actually a problem because as I move the car forward, um, let's go ahead. Oh, I went too far. I don't see any of the balls. Oh, let's, let's pause it on there. Let's go back. I actually want to go down here and just have a little bit of fun. Uh, let's let's scroll back a little bit right there and play it and pause. Oh, a little farther. Oh, yes. Now I can get up with an awesome screenshot. Let's have a little bit of headroom. And here we go. And then we'll go ahead and take a screenshot. And that screenshot's taken to the folder here. I'll take that into my project and look at your save folder. And you'll see that the uh, screenshots are right there. You can see my awesome screenshot I just um, uh, exported out. But back to the main problem here we wanted to focus on is why my projectiles are not uh, shooting out. So let's show you what that is. Let's go ahead and quit real quick and open up the project back up. And I'll show you how to fix these kind of issues. So basically the way that the uh, demo player works is everything is a replication of a network. So whenever you spawn that extra player, replay spectator, player controller in, what it does is actually records all the network variables being sent across. But it doesn't actually go nowhere. It just writes it to a file basically in memory and then prints it to a disk in their own format. It records all the transformations. So if that uh, projectile is not... Um, replicated, it could be a problem actually showing up because it never sees that information. So let's go ahead and go to my, uh, I've put all these content things together, something my son likes to do, and uh, I'll go ahead and go to the first person blueprint, this projectile that shootout. Let's open this bad boy up. And what we want to do is go over to the uh, replication area. So that's pretty important is to have it set replicates. Now that will turn on the data being recorded in the demo player. So so we have to click on, also I like to click on always relevant specifically for this because if, if it gets called out, we don't want it to be um, not seen. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up, save this out, and let's see if that fixes our problem real quick. All right, so I fast forwarded, I went ahead and shut down the game and brought it back up. 
Uh, and then what we have is our old demo player here. Now the data has already been recorded for that, so that doesn't retroactively come back and put those projectiles in there. Um, but there are some useful things that we could do with old recordings for debugging. Besides, you know, having a replay uh, system for your game, you also have a, a trailer maker. You can make good screenshots, but you also have a platform to debug. You could actually replay a, a bug in the replayer in the debugger and uh, try, to, try to get more information than you normally would just from saying, hey, there is a crash. Well, if you have to record a game of that crash, there's a lot of information you can pull from it, including loading up the dump file and see exactly what happened. Uh, you can also play through that replay file to actually create the same crash again so you can see the events leading up to. It's pretty handy. I've used it a few times for troubleshooting. So let's go ahead and um, I'm talking here and let's go ahead and switch to turn this on. Let's go ahead and start shooting shooting the, the balls and see if the balls actually start uh, replicating. So I'm going nuts here. Oh yeah, let's go. Man, I am like the worst driver. Definitely not an Indy 500 guy apparently. But okay, let's see. That's good enough. Let's see if we actually got that recording. Um, I did talk for about 30 seconds before I started, so let's see if this jump ahead here. Oh, and what we see is balls. Lots of wonderful yellow balls flying everywhere. So there you have it, guys. That's um, a, uh, a way to set up the replay browser and plus something uh, to look out for if you're not actually replicating your um, uh, pieces such as your projectiles or any gameplay thing that's not actually showing up which is, should be while you're playing, check those network replication uh, flags in your actors. So there you have it. That's a way to get the replay browser up and running. It's quick. You guys saw how quick we, uh, if you followed all the steps to this video, your replay system should be working and you're able to go in and out and delete those uh, replays. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, continue on for the next series on how to use some of the tools in here. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.